Okay, I've been given this microeconomics question where it tells us that a competitive firm faces a price of $6 and a total cost function equal to 10 plus 2Q minus 2Q squared plus 0.1Q cubed. Now, Q is going to be the quantity of goods. So part A asks us to find the marginal cost, the average variable cost, the average total cost, and the fixed cost. So what we have to do to find the marginal cost, we have... Yeah, marginal cost. So this is part A. The marginal cost is going to be the derivative of the total cost. With respect to the quantity. So, this is a basic calculus question. So we just take the derivative of the total cost function and that's going to be equal to 2 minus, minus 0 0.2 times 2 is 0 0.4 cube. Um, and then we're going to be adding 0 0.1 times 3 is 0 0.03. Q cubed. Now, that's the marginal cost because the marginal cost is the cost of the next unit. So it's the rate of change of cost per for every unit. So we're going to take, whenever it says marginal in economics, that just means we have to take the derivative. So the next one is the average variable cost. So we have the average variable cost. Now, the average variable cost is equal to the variable cost divided by the number of units that we're producing. So it is going to change over, over the amount of units that we make. So the variable cost is the obviously the part of the total cost function that's not fixed. So the fixed portion of the total cost function is the portion of the function that doesn't depend on the quantity produced. So in this case, it's going to be 10. So the variable cost part is going to have to be the rest of the function. So our variable cost is going to be equal to 2Q minus 0.2Q squared plus 0 0.2. 0, 1, Q cubed. Cool. And we're going to divide all of that by Q. Now, if we divide all of that by Q, because we can factor out a Q in the top, we're going to be able to cancel out some of the Qs on the top of the function. So if we want to write this in a nice, easy to understand way, this is going to be 2Q divided by Q, which is just 2 minus 0.2q squared divided by q, which is going to be just minus 0.2q rather than q squared, plus 0.01q cubed divided by q, which is going to make it just 0.01q squared. And so that's our average variable cost function. So the next one we have is average total cost, which is going to be equal to, like the average variable cost, just the total cost function divided by the number, the quantity of units that we produce. So that's going to be just, the, like we just said, the total cost divided by the quantity of units that we're going to produce. So this is going to be equal to our total cost function, which is just written above. Point 0.2q squared plus 0.01q cubed. Now this is going to be divided by the number of the quantity of units that we make. So like the 
problem before. It's going to be exactly the same as this. However, we're going to have a ten. We're going to divide our fixed cost over the amount of units that we're going to produce. So we're going to have ten. Well, that's a funny zero over Q plus then this average variable cost two minus zero point two Q plus zero point zero one Q squared. Great. And finally, for part A, the fixed cost. Now, like we said in the previous question, the fixed cost is equal to the part of our total cost function that doesn't depend on the quantity that we're making. So the only part of this function that doesn't depend on the quantity that we're making is this $10 amount here. So the fixed cost is just going to be 10. Cool. So we'll move on to part B. Let's just separate it out. Change color. Part B. So find the optimum quantity produced and uh, pi star. Now pi star is the maximum profit. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to um, derive a profit function for this scenario. So our profit function is going to be equal to the total revenue that we're going to get minus the total cost. Now, mo most if not all profit functions will take this form, the revenue minus the cost. And in this case, that's going to be equal to the revenue is the price is $6. So $6 times the amount that we're going to sell subtract the cost function, which is uh, this thing. 10 plus 2Q minus 0.2Q squared plus 0.01Q to the power of 3. So, we can then just simplify this a little bit. I'm going to work sideways so I don't run out of space. To simplify this, what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to combine our like terms. 6Q min minus 2Q is 4Q. So we're going to be left with 10 plus 4Q. Then we've got a minus and a minus, so that's going to be a plus 0.2q squared. I have a minus and a plus, so that's now going to be a minus, minus 0.01q to the power of 3. So here we have our profit function. Now, to, to maximize profit or find the op, to find the optimum quantity that we're going to produce, is we're going to have to take the derivative of the profit function. So dp with respect to q, and that's going to be equal to 4 plus 0.4q minus... 0.03q squared. Great. And the optimum profit in this case is going to be when this derivative is at a maximum, so the derivative will equal 0, or well, the derivative will show a maximum, and at that point, the derivative is equal to 0. So what we can do, make it easy to see, I'm going to get rid of all the decimals in this case by multiplying both sides by 100 of the equal sign. And actually, I'm going to change the sign of the Q squared by multiplying them both by negative 100. So what that's going to give me 
is it's going to give me 400, well, negative 400, minus 40Q, plus 0, plus, sorry, 3Q squared. And that's all, 0 times 100 is still 0. So, from here, I'm going to rearrange this so I've got in order of um, the powers on Q. So I'm going to have 3Q squared minus 40Q minus 400 equals 0. We'll take this over here. So, what we have to do, in this case, we're going to have to, you can either um, put it into a, some sort of quadratic formula, you can put it into a uh, equation solving calculator, or you could factorize it. Now, if you're good at your mental maths, you'll see that this will factorize to 3q plus 20, q minus 20 equals 0. So there are two solutions for Q using the null factor law. Q could be equal to negative 20 over 3, or Q could be equal to 20. Now, obviously, we can't have a negative amount of units that we're going to sell. So in this case, the, the optimum quantity is going to be 20. So, we now have to find uh, the maximum profit. So, that's um, pi star. So, pi star is going to be equal to... Now, we found our profit function here. Sorry, here. So, we've got 10 sorry, negative 10. If I'm going to go back, that's going to be negative 10 plus 4 times 20 plus 0 0.2 times 20 squared minus 0 0.01 20 cubed and what you'll find is this is equal to $70 so the optimum we can write unit after that or widgets or whatever you want to write and the optimum profit or the maximum profit is going to occur at 70. So sorry about that little calculation error in the middle there, but um, we fixed it in the end when we realized that, that was going to have to be a negative because it is a cost. It, that's the uh, fixed cost. So in the profit function, the fixed cost will reduce your profit. So I hope that little demo helped, and I'll see you again next time.